we present an extraordinary designer, a Brazilian superstar, Fred Jelly. Uh, I want to thank our partners for their support of today's program, the Detroit Creative Corridor Center, stewards of the UNESCO City of Design designation, and AIGA Detroit, uh, and Michigan Radio 91.7 FM. Many of you already know this, but in case anyone in the audience here does not, uh, I want to point out Detroit is now the first American city to be named a UNESCO City of Design. Yeah. This is an honor uh, which recognizes a city's design legacy and commitment to promoting creative industries and design's contribu contribution, Detroit's contributions to design are certainly substantial and uh, design continues to play a significant role in our culture and economy here. Good for all of the design students in the audience. Uh, another special welcome we have today with us in the audience, uh, a special group with, which is only with us usually once a year, the Stamp School Dean's Advisory Council is in the house today. This council is comprised of alumni from the school who have embarked from here to find successful careers and we honor their knowledge and appreciate their dedication in coming back to help guide us. So thank you all for your time and your energy for being here with us today. Yeah. Nice. Oh, and before we meet again, folks, many big changes are taking place. Number one, don't forget Sunday daylight savings. You will get an extra hour to sleep in, and the next time we meet for penny stamps, it will be dark. Yeah, the good and the bad, we take it all. But the penny stamp series will be here to light your path. Uh, and again, before we meet again, do not forget Tuesday, Go and exercise your right to vote, please. We will have, yes, we will have a newly elected president next time we meet. Come on, guys, just get out and vote. Um, and then on Wednesday, following the election, we have a penny stamp special presentation, uh, which you should not miss. This is featuring social practice artist, artist Mary Mattingly. Uh, she's currently in residence here at the university at the Institute for the Humanities, creating two new projects on campus. Uh, one of them is called Sacred Objects, which is an outdoor burial project, which is happening on the Diag. The opening ceremony for that, uh, if you will, is on Monday at noon, actually, but uh, you can, it will be up, you know, throughout the week. Uh, then Objects Unveiled, her other project, is tracing the history of cobalt in Michigan. Uh, there will be an exhibition opening at the Institute for Humanities Gallery directly following her talk on Wednesday, which will be happening at 5, 10 p.m., regular penny stamps time, different place, uh, different day. So that's Wednesday. It's at Rackham. It's upstairs in the amphitheater. Uh, so join us there, please, on Wednesday. Please remember to turn off your cell phones. Uh, we are going to have our regular Q&A today, which is not in this room, but at the end, if you want to come and meet Fred and ask him some questions, please exit through the doors, go left down the hallway, and into the screening room uh, auditorium. Now for a little background on our guest today. Fred Jelly is co-founder and creative, creative director of Tachu, which if an American was looking at this word, you would say Tatil. But I'm trying my Portuguese, which Fred has helped me with, Tachu, a strategic uh, consultancy that uses design to create sustainable connections between people and brands, such as Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, Philips, and Netflix. Uh, over his 27-year trajectory, he has accumulated over 100 national and international awards, including IF Design Award, IDEA, uh, D and A and D in Britain, and a con lion. Uh, his latest achievement was designing the Rio 2016 Olympic and Paralympic Games brands, and as the creative director of the Paralympic opening and closing ceremonies in Rio. Uh, and in 2014, Fred was included in Fast Company's ranking of the 100 most creative folks in the world. And while his company was included in the top 10 most innovative in South America, in the same year he was named one of the 50 most influential Brazilians. Uh, for the last 15 years, on top of all this, Fred has been uh, a university professor teaching eco-design and biomimicry. I think you will enjoy him very much. Please welcome Fred Jelly. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> Hello, guys. Woohoo! Beautiful theater, beautiful city. Thanks a lot for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. I walked around in this, this morning in the city, and I feel like a, in a film scenario. So beautiful. All of the leaves spread in the, the field, and I, I have one here. <laughs> it's fantastic. All of the colors, all of the pantones, you can find it. So, uh, the idea here today is to share with you guys our experience in these last 30 years, uh, some design principles, and especially the work that we developed in the last five years with my team, more than 100 people in Rio, in Sao Paulo. Uh, that was the, the identity from the Olympics and Paralympic Games in Rio. And first of all, let me check the technology, okay. Uh, I started to do engineer in Rio, but I did only three weeks because it's so complicated that that calculus books and so uh, and I I decided to go to design and my first um, intention in design was to learn how to design packages better than especially that uh, ketchup sachet do you know that one that you open and you <laughs> yeah it's terrible and I was challenged uh, for a special teacher in, in, in that period to think about uh, the packaging that brought me to the world. The belly of my mother is a very sophisticated packaging that uh, feed the content, that keep them warm perfectly and ex expose in the right time. It's, it's amazing. And when she challenged me, I understood that the design for me changed completely the perspective, the possibilities to really to look nature, to understand how design things. Especially when you compare uh, banana skin with a ketchup sachet. This is much more friendly, you know, it's, it's amazing. And like, like tangerine with uh, specific doses for each one is fantastic to, to share. And, and I understood that this was an was a amazing source of inspiration. Uh, it's obvious to, to bring this, this this amazing um, intelligence for our projects. And especially I learned that nature used three main principles to design everything. The first one is the optimization. Nature hates waste. All the time, the solution is the solution where you, you are using the less amount of energy and material all the time. The second one is cycle, closed cycle. Everything is inside of a big cycle. And you don't, don't find a trash in nature. Trash and resources are the same thing in nature, in everywhere. And the third one is the interdependence. It's a very intuitive principle that um, defines that everything that is, is alive in this planet is connected in a very very uh, complex net. When you push some point of this net, the whole net moves, and you have consequences for each action, for each small uh, movement. And, and these principles, in, in, in that moment when I was 20 years old, probably with who, who has who is uh, 20 years old here, 25 or something like that, just to to have the idea. Many people. I was very romantic in that moment. And I'm still romantic today, nowadays. It's very important. Keep it. Keep it this. Keep the, the energy, the, 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 the young energy in your lives all the time. This is very important. Sorry, just a second. And when, when in the next um, disciplines that I started, that I still doing, I learned that our approach is a little bit different of the nature approach. Instead to be optimum, we are maximum. <laughs> we invented the limos. And this is a hummer, a limo hummer. This uh, uh, could be the, the, the most uh, um, extravagant limo that, that, you, that you see or not. 
this is a big one, but I was in Moscow uh, two years ago and I saw one limo, made Hummer limo, gold, with, uh, in, with the interior was red. It was crazy. <laughs> so we are a very, very extravagant uh, animal and we love to, to, to use a lot of energy and material all the time. And you don't think in a... Something happened? Oh no, okay, come back. Uh, we think in a linear perspective, we extract, extracted um, raw material, we produce things, and we use these things for some time, and after that we threw it away in that magic place that we invented called uh, trash, with that only that, that you open the... Sorry about my English, but much better than your Portuguese. So <laughs> I'll do my best. So I, I'm going to use my Italian blood and some mimic to, to help me. So when you open the, the trash and you just threw the, any, any waste there, that, that waste disappear. You don't have any kind of responsibility about this, 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 this trash. And the third principle that we use, completely different, in opposition, completely opposite of nature, is the fragmented vision. We don't think, we don't understand that everything is connected. We lose completely, completely this perception that when you, when you do something, the, the entire world uh, uh, re uh, responds to this, this, this stimulus. And this is very important. And we, we have a very fragmented, we have a very Cartesian approach for everything. And um, using these principles, I started my company 30, 29 years ago, actually. And one of the, 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 formalizing, the, the formalization of this approach is biomimicry. Probably most of you guys here heard about this. It's a, it's a science that believes that you can bring inspiration from nature to use in our design uh, universe or architecture or engineer on any kinds of... of um, human beings uh, uh, areas and it's so obviously because nature has been developing especially strategies in the last 3.8 billion years it's an amazing R&D process <laughs> that you can go there uh, you can understand the process of evolution of some idea from 100 million years for example you just you just can go there and just bring the ideas and you, the best part is God doesn't charge any copyright. You can use this cop left. It's fantastic. And all of the inspiration comes with sustainability behind, because all of the design solutions in nature are completely sustainable. It's, it's obvious, uh, like uh, approach, like, but it's amazing how uh, rare is still this science in, in schools. And, but uh, I believe that this is going to be a... a, a a very important area in, in future in the next years. So, I was a romantic eco designer, like I told you, when if I was 20 years old, and I was invited for the Green um, Political Party in Brazil to design the the pin for the campaign of one of the presidents, uh, one, one of the candidates, the Green uh, candidate. And in my perspective, in my opinion, to participate of the ecological uh, universe and, and, and movement, you didn't have just one symbol for everybody. It was really important that everybody could have uh, their own symbol. And the main idea I proposed this idea was that uh, instead to have a, a pin, a regular pin with the V of the, the Green Party, the idea was to, to have a small box, cardboard, cardboard box, with small cities, like that cities that, that fix in your socks. And the main idea was to use each seed like a pixel that you could make the drawing. And when you hug someone, part of the, the pin fix in the other one. And in that moment, you are spreading the idea and spreading the city. Because the nature designed this seed exactly to, to take rise in animals and to spread this, this species. And, and so, this was a, a little bit crazy idea. It was really complicated to produce this because it was really complicated to harvest birds. <laughs> we actually imagine people with long, long sleeves and turtleneck rolling in the grass trying to... 
but was a little bit complicated. But uh, because this idea, only not only because this idea, but when when we received a uh, visit from Anita Hodek from from Body Shop, the very famous cosmetic company, British company. When she saw this this idea, she invited us to to go to London, and uh, and we, we uh, spent there 30 days in the headquarter of Body Shop. It was an amazing experience. I was 23 or 24 years old. It's a crazy idea that I, li I like to share because I think that it's very important to share, to, to still with crazy ideas in their heads because not to be so um, close and connected with the, the, the concrete um, challenges and everything. It's very important to open their, your minds and trying to, to explore the possibilities in, in general. And new connections can, can happen when you really can imagine. So in, I did a lecture in TED. And I, I used the idea. I, I was a, with a shirt with a big drawing made with seeds, and I, I gave many hugs, made many hugs because Brazilians love hugs all the time. And I spread a lot of a lot of seeds. But so I'd like to share before to, to talk about the Olympic and Paralympic Games. I'd like to share some design principles that we use that I think that can be interesting for you guys here. And that represents th that we define 25 years ago, but still like our main design principles. The first one is work hard to reach maximum simplicity. Simplicity is the, is the best all the time. And it's very complicated to find it because you need to go deep, you need to work hard. And I brought some examples, just one example for each design principle. And the example that, that I bring here uh, was the identity for, from Coca-Cola that we designed from the Olympics uh, this year, but it's going to be the, the identity from the, the next Olympics, is uh, the connection between Coca-Cola and Olympics. And the main idea comes directly, directly in a very simple um, approach, uh, because the, the, the briefing, the idea in the briefing was really to represent the movement that has a huge connection with Olympics. And the this element uh, is, very, is very connected with movement, but it's funny because nobody knows the movement of the ribbon is the, the name of this symbol, suggests the idea of infinite flow. But nobody knows where does it come from and where does it lead. And we decided to explore this in a very simple way and using like a main uh, inspiring, the the paper strip trying to continue this story behind the ribbon. We just use uh, this idea and we create many boards with this 3D uh, poster. And this is a short video showing the Coca Cola. The language. The Everyone language. knows this brand in so many ways. But not everyone knows that Coca Cola is the Olympic Games' oldest sponsor. Two of the most iconic brands on the planet, together for 87 years. In 2016, they will be side by side during a unique moment. The first Olympic Games in South America. And in Rio, nonetheless. Yes, the wonderful city. A place that seems to have been created for you to taste the feeling. That invites locals and visitors to a life with more movement. A place that unites, blends, embraces, ready to welcome athletes from around the world and creates a wave which goes beyond lanes, lines, tracks, flags. Not randomly, it is in this place that for the first time, Coca-Cola will reveal the entire extension of its dynamic ribbon. A wave with no beginning or end, of unexpected results. The movements are always surprising contagious, energizing, and embracing. A wave that makes us feel vibrant, feel bold, and taste the victory, taking over the world. A wave that has been worked out to exhaustion until it became a consistent and flexible system.
sketched out to allow infinite materializations. Made to be spread. In the 2016 Olympic Games, the Coca-Cola that the world knows in a way that no one has seen before. So, and they, they use it a lot, this, this, this design language, language in Rio. It was great to, to see this identity mixed with our, with our uh, Olympic identity. It was great. So, the second one is understand that emotion is the most powerful bonding ingredient in any project. This is really important. This is basic in Brazil. We do everything with a lot of passion. And in a certain way, I think that we, we can, we, we normally try to, to put this, this energy and this emotion in everything that we do. And the example that I brought is the gachu. Gachu is cat plus tachu, because cat in Portuguese is gato. And Gachu is our mascot, is this guy. It's a small cat with uh, the feet are made with sand. And the main idea is when you throw it away, he lands in his feet, always like the cats, the, the regular cats. And this is my way. So, the third one is consider optimization of energy and materials resources all the time, like nature. This is, this is basic, especially for you guys here that are studying design and you're going to work in the next 50, 20, 30 years. Uh, it, we, it's very, very important to, to consider this, this principle, and this is complicated many times because uh, we live in a, in a world uh, where the, the eco solutions are boring. And I used to say that we need to forget the eco boring solutions where the environmental impact is low, but the sensorial impact is low too. We need to look for solutions is where exactly the solutions where you have the low environmental impact with high sensorial impact and we try to do this in this project for Natura cosmetic company in Brazil um, and the main idea is to use that very simple and, and very um, with low low uh, um, less uh, plastic amount in this in this solution and you can you can take it all of the, the last drop of, of product inside and reducing 75% of the, the amount of plastic and 50% the, the environmental impact in general. It's very simple. And in a certain way, when you brought the colors and the shapes, and the shape is inspired in a drop of water, it's a very, very economic uh, shape and, 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 and relationship between the material and the volume inside. It's, Looks like a, a good uh, example of eco-sexy idea. And so this is another one that I think that's a good example too, is to consider the life cycle of everything that you design. And I was invited in 2008, 2009 to, this, to, to make a lecture in, in Cannes Festival about design and, and nature. And I decided to create an invitation that could be sustainable. And the main idea was to use a regular leaf and to print the information and the, the in images in directly in the, in the leaves using laser. And, and the, the main idea is to just like a flyer and you have the invitation. After to read, you can throw it away that nature recycle. We're going to recycle this leaf like a regular leaf because it's just leaf. 
you don't have ink or nothing, it's just the leaf, was really, really good in, in the, the, the next year we won a, a lion, a gold lion with this, this idea, that's great. So, and now the, the, this principle is the principle that uh, I believe that's very important when you think about design. Uh, we can't design any line, we can't make any shape before we understand the soul, the main idea behind the, the, the principle, the, 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 the central idea in the briefing. And to explain better this principle, I brought the case from the Olympics. Everything started in 2009 when he won the, the, the uh, competition to, to host the Olympics. And this is a very, very important symbol for all of the designers here and, and for everybody. It has a lot of meanings behind this, this, this symbol. And and this is a kind of dream project for all kinds of, of designers in, in, in the world. And I remember, uh, because this is the most complex visual identity in the world, uh, but I remember the day uh, when we're going we're gonna to go to the theater like this one to take the briefing of the Rio 2016 Committee. It was a big competition. When I, when I arrived there, I saw a group of more more or less 400 people. And I, when I looked at it, look, come on guys, let's give up, because 400 people wanting the same project is something really complex. This, this is a real picture. It was 139 different agents. That becomes 87, that becomes 25, that becomes eight. And in the end of the, the, this huge process, we won this competition. And it was a really complicated briefing, because we didn't have one target. Our target was the, the entire world. And this is complicated when you, have, when you need to design something. You don't have a specific group of people with a specific desires. It's very complicated. You really need to, to, to have one idea that could uh, um, deliver meanings for six billion, seven billion people. This is complicated. And we have in briefing, in this briefing, 12 different attributes that we should put in this identity. Reflect local culture, at the same time, universally understood, be dynamic, be innovative, happy, everything together at the same time, just one symbol that could represent the Carioca way of living and welcome people, the Brazilian's enthusiasm. Actually, it was 12. And we did more than 50 different logos, and just one really could check all of these, these attributes. And the way that we decided to do this was to put everybody to work together more than 100 people working together in, in two offices. Not to be, not like a competition, but it's a very collaborative way to, to work. It was the first time that we did this in this way. And this is a picture of our team. It was an amazing process. Especially this logo was the, the idea that was more um, manipulated for many people. Everybody touched it in this idea and, and give their contribution and change it completely the way that we design things in Tachu since that moment. And the, the essence of this identity is passion and transformation. Passion, like I said, is something that is very common in Brazil. And we understood in that moment that passion was the, the main fuel that we need to use if you want to transform our city and our country in our image, when you, when you think about the, the Brazil, Brazil's branding in general. And we try, like I said, before to, to make any drawing or to, to choose any color or shape, to define the main ingredients of the soul. The soul of the, the brand, the soul of the identity that could represent 
the meeting between the Olympic spirit and the address in Rio de Janeiro, the, the, the Rio de Janeiro uh, soul, how we could put together. And we understood that some of the, these ingredients are so Brazilian in general. It's not to Rio specifically, but it's, it's more uh, like uh, uh, Rio is like, a, it's like a synthesis of Brazil in a certain way. And we should have there our diversity. We are very mixed people. We need to bring this diversity. We should have our nature, our exuberant nature, because this is a very strong in our identity. And in our days, we, we touch and we stay all the time in the middle of a beautiful, a special nature. We should have the, the Olympic spirit that should bring the excellence in everything that, we're gonna, that was produced in, in, in name of this, this, this identity. But the most important ingredient is the energy, is this contagious energy that we have and that should be in this, in this identity. And, and this is the tool that we developed. The name is Brand Direction. It's, it's a kind of compass that was in the, in the table of the, all of the, the Rio 2016 employers that helped them to, to develop all of the expressions of this, this brand with a very, very high level of integrity, of connection, and worked really well. But most of, most of every, everything, this should be a human brand. And another choice, and a very, very risk bet that we decided to do was to propose that this logo could be a three-dimensional logo. Because we understood that we live in a very sculpture city. It would make a lot of sense to have a sculpture logo for a sculpture city. But it was a very risk bet because this is the first one in the history of the Olympics, and they could hate or they could love. And the shape is the shape of our main postcard. That is the sugar loaf, is this one. We tried to bring this because it's the most recognizable icon in Brazil, in Rio. And we have this, exactly this shape. And, but all of the other curves of the, the logo comes from the other mountains in Rio, like that, like this. Because you understood that when you have these shapes, you create some intimacy between the Cariocas and the brand. Because we are all the time bumping in, this, in these mountains, and we know these shapes. We have these shapes in our, in our mind. And helps a lot to, to guarantee that the, the identity uh, should be a Carioca identity. But most of everything, this, this brand was made to be experienced. Many, many possibilities to be used. And this is the film that we created to launch the logo after four months of work. Thank you. And this moment was a very, perhaps the most nervous moment in my life, because before this date, that was 31 of December in 2010, uh, only 150 uh, people was, uh, see this, this identity, because it was a completely secrecy, completely. And I was in a Copacabana Palace, the big hotel in Copacabana, with more than 100 journalists around the world, 
And the logo, we're going to be launched in Copacabana Beach in the new year. And a big flag like this one with more than 1,500 square meters is going to be spread uh, above the, 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 the people. And probably it was something 40 degrees Celsius, a lot of hot in Rio at this moment. And I was imagining people ripping the, the flag. And I, oh my God, that's going to happen. But when they opened the flag, people started to dance um, above the, the, the flag. And in that moment, the, the brand started to move. And, and, and I saw, oh my God, they, have, they, they like it. It was amazing. And the movement that you want to bring for the logo was really happened in the real, real life. People dancing above the, 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 the flag. It was amazing. And after that moment, all of the, the world uh, knows the, the, the logo and was amazing. But the most interesting thing that happens was that the Cariocas, the most simple people, uh, understood the identity and, and could feel themselves represented by this, this identity. And was curious because people started to see different meanings that uh, we couldn't imagine. For example, I was in a slum in Brazil, in the Complexo do Alemão, and one community leader told me, Fred, I understood your logo. I go, okay, really? Go ahead, explain me. Oh, it's easy to see. It's, there are three forces there. Three forces? Go ahead. Yeah, it's the people, the governments, and the companies and the businessmen that are going to be in a big hug to change our city and our country. And they said, okay, exactly what you thought about it. And it was crazy because people started to see different meanings. Another curious stuff that they, they saw was Rio wrote in the symbol, like here, like R E O. It makes sense or not? The mayor saw this, this one, and people started to do the, the, the movement, trying to do the movement and the, the disposition all the time, simple people. It was crazy how, how uh, many different meetings uh, were appearing, and you could imagine some of them. And I believe that, in a certain way, um, these good meanings comes from the, the, the creative energy that more than 100 people put together in the same idea. And this is the typography, inspired to in, in the curves and the shapes of our mountains and our city in general. And the typography was the base to inspire uh, all of the shapes of the pictograms, the curves and the, the, the different, um, uh, you understand me? I don't know how can I say this in English, uh, but all of the shapes comes from the, the, the typography. And it's the first time that you have specific pictograms from the Paralympic Games. And all of the geometry of the, the identity comes from the geometry of Rio. And this shape, this, this um, um, pebble, is, I don't know how can I say this in English too, but it's a basic shape for the whole identity. Sorry. This is the medals. And it was really crazy during the games in the, the last two years to see the identity spread in everywhere. This is our money. And it was crazy to stay in a, a bakery and you receive the exchange with the identity that, that you created. It's something curious. <laughs> products, many different products. Stamps. And this is some of the image that was in the entire world with the identity in the, in the squares and in, in, in different arenas spread in the city. It was a really special feeling to see everything happen well. Because we had so many bad news before the, the games, you know, guys, here. Everybody was talking, come on, going to be uh, terrible, Zika and everything, and, and violence, and 
Cariocas don't know and Brazilians don't know how to organize the, the biggest event in the world. And everything works so well. And the energy was amazing there all the time. That was really, really special. I, I experiment. Uh, I saw one, one moment very interesting. I was in the closing ceremony of the, the Olympics, and I saw a British athlete, a gold medal British athlete, because in the end of the closing ceremony happened a samba, many samba schools, and the girl was singing, dancing a lot and singing, and, and she took off her medal and put in the master of the, the battery and did this with a big smile. And in that moment, I understood that nobody going to forget what they live in Rio. And this was so special. Another interesting thing that happened in this the first time, that instead to give flowers to the athletes with the medal, they received the small sculpture. Uh, because it's much more sustainable and, and cheaper than the, the flowers. It's, it's crazy. It's very expensive to keep fresh flowers for this amount of people. And I brought here. It's this one. You can find in eBay for a thousand dollars. It's crazy. Yeah, it's so simple, but that's great. And it's, the flowers normally they they leave, and this is a gift uh, that represents this energy and this experience that they they leave it there. It was was really special for us to this this moment, this uh, special idea. <laughs> and everybody made tattoos with the identity. Neymar, our champion. Do you know Neymar, no? Always in the, when I go in a taxi around the world, and go, oh, Brazil, oh, football, Neymar. Have all the time. It's crazy. And this is Barbara, the, the keeper of the football, uh, human, human, uh, woman football. And this is the Paralympic logo in the other guy. And this is the energy of Brazilians in the arenas. It was amazing. And this is Michael Phelps saying thank you for the Brazilians. <laughs> it was great. But I'd like to share the, the, another story that was the, the identity from the Paralympics that was amazing. Um, because uh, after the launch of the Olympics and every, everything happens really well, the IPC, this International Paralympic Committee, uh, um, suggested to Rio 2016, invited us to create, not to make another bid, but invited us to create this, this new identity. And it was a big challenge to create a second logo after the, the, the reception and the success of the first one, especially trying to represent the strong of the Paralympic movement uh, and the, the, the essence that is the spirit in movement, in movement or emotion. And, and this is so inspiring because we are not talking about bodies. We are talking about something else, something bigger, uh, that is the, the spirit in motion. Your body can have uh, limitations, but if you really want, if you really believe, you can, you can do crazy stuff like they do. And we decided, this is Daniel Diaz, our championship with more medals than Michael Phelps. Ah, it's true. Yeah, we're imagining a, a kind of, a kind of um, film that we could put together, that Phelps and Daniel Diaz counting medals like one, both. One, two, three, four. And Phelps, 18, something like that. 18, and Daniel, 19, 20, and <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> yeah, so, and it was amazing. And we decided, we received from the 2016 committee a list with 13 different attributes, like in the Olympics, and we decided to put another attribute there that they didn't uh, ask, ask us. Uh, um, but we decided to put there because we understood that we uh, were designing something for a very specific target in this moment. that are the athletes and the handicapped people in general, uh, blind people, deaf people, people with all kinds of sensors and, and senses working. And we decided to create a multisensorial 
identity for blind people, for example, to, to try to experience. And works like that. Uh, this is a, it's a heart with an infinite symbol. It's a universal icon. You can sound. Um, and the main idea is when you put together the heart and the infinite symbol, the main idea is trying to, to express the spirit emotion and the infinite energy that these guys have to go uh, after an accident, for example, when they lose legs or arms. Uh, this way between this moment until the top of the podium is really complicated. And the main idea is when you're getting closer of this heart, we have the light inside, the, the heart started to, to beat faster, and we create a kind of uh, sound texture that makes uh, heartbeat sound with um, sound of people inside of stadium, like ta 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 ta, something like that. And, and 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 this is interesting because it's it's open opportunity to oh this uh, it's a video sorry, <laughs> and and. And this idea worked so well, and we put this, this 3D and this multisensorial logo in the Paralympic Villa for the athletes to uh, try the, the, the idea. And, and in a certain way, this idea inspired ourselves to create many other things. For example, the medal, the, the, medal, the Paralympic medals, has some small um, iron balls inside in different amounts, or different amounts. When you shake it, the gold has a sound, the silver has a sound, and the, the, the bronze has another sound. And this, for a blind people, is, it's interesting and it's uh, multisensorial too. And here has a, uh, a video that um, show our people, our guys, our team, with some ideas about the, the creation process of the department the logo. Paralímpico Internacional é, achou que a marca Paralímpica deveria ter conexão com a marca Olímpica e a mesma força que ela já tinha demonstrado. E aí nos convidou para fazer. A gente teve uma coisa muito positiva na marca Olímpica foi conseguir fazer as equipes trabalharem de maneira coletiva como a gente nunca antes tinha conseguido em nenhum outro projeto da tarde. A gente já partiu também desse mesmo princípio, assim, todo mundo junto. Foram mais de 150 desenhos só no meu caderno. Seria fundamental a gente entender muito do universo, cada modalidade. Então a gente começou com os principais atletas do Brasil. Tem que entrar naquilo, assimilar aquilo, viver aquilo, para projetar para aquela realidade. As pessoas têm muitos preconceitos em relação ao esporte paralímpico. Quem nunca viu uma competição não sabe do que se trata. Porque a experiência de assistir a uma competição é única. O nível de envolvimento que rola é, é impressionante. A gente descobriu isso ao longo da dinâmica. Eles são tão competitivos quanto qualquer outro atleta. Aquilo ali é a vida deles, é sério, é treinamento. Eles treinam pesadamente para ganhar um décimo segundo numa competição. Mais do que falar das diferenças, essa marca deveria falar do que nos torna iguais, do que nos é comum, do que existe em todo mundo. A marca que está alinhada com os conceitos do design universal, ou seja, é uma marca para todos. E o coração é o que nos torna iguais, é o que todo mundo tem igual. Não é um coração super óbvio, ele é um coração que se você for olhar ele é abstrato, ela tem um infinito que quando você está fazendo a curva, a performance, você volta, você se reinventa. É você se reinventar o tempo inteiro e ganhar energia para transformar. para essa marca, né, teve essa ideia, né, de colocar o som, pulsar ali do coração. Quando eu coloquei a mão ali, eu comecei a pensar na minha história como atleta. Eu não aguentei segurar a emoção. So, this uh, woman is a uh, Adria dos Santos. She's a uh, our Thank you. 
she's a runner, a blind runner. And after that moment, she started to cry, and everybody started to cry, the journalists and the filmmakers and everybody, and me and everybody. Uh, she said that it was the first time in 20 years, like athlete, that she could try this symbol that represents her all, her, her all life, in the, in the, in, like athlete. And it was amazing. We had opportunity to, to explore this. Um, and after that, we, I was invited to take part in this team with Vicky Muniz and Marcelo Rubens Paiva to develop the, the opening and closing ceremony from the, the, the Paralympic Games. And it was an amazing invitation. And we worked for two years, more than two years, two and a half years, trying to, to bring uh, many ideas that we developed in the, to developing the, the identity we, we brought to this ceremony. And it was a huge opportunity to talk about uh, subjects so uh, deep and so uh, that touch uh, the human beings in general. We talk about um, limits, we talk about diversity, we talk about senses, and it was great. And the, everything happened so well, much better than that you could imagine. We had a big group, more than 500 people from different uh, countries working together. And this is uh, are some moments. This is a very, very special moment where um, uh, Vicky Muniz created a regional piece of art during the entry of the athletes. We decided to, 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 to invite the athletes to go inside of the Maracana in the beginning of the ceremony because they need to watch the, the ceremony. And each country uh, brings um, a piece of puzzle that is going to be assembled in, in the center of the Maracana in when the, the uh, group brought the last one and Vicky put the last piece, the heart started to beat like tan tan, tan tan. And the Maracanã started to beat because everybody started to clap their hands like ta ta, ta ta, ta ta. And the lights, red lights around, it was, I was crying like that. <laughs> it was complicated. And this is a, a, a beautiful moment uh, where two uh, blind dancers danced together and we create a, a kind of interaction, digital interaction, that could represent the, 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 the tactile uh, feelings when they are dance, dancing. And this was another beautiful moment where we talk about the relationship between the technology and the human beings. And she's um, um, Amy Purdy, she's an American uh, Paralympic athlete from snowboard. And, and she danced with a kuka, with a robot, trying to, to, to show how the human beings are bringing technology uh, for, our, for our lives in general, and how technology is trying to be more human. And we have this relationship really uh, going uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a same direction uh, in the next years, especially in the Paralympic universe. And this is the Peter. It's was a beautiful Peter. And here has a short video showing the main, some of the main moments of the, the closing ceremony. Um, and someone watched the, the, the opening ceremony of the Paralympics here? Only you? Oh my God. You need to watch it. It was amazing. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's show this video just like a teaser for you guys to watch it in YouTube this is the president of IPC Our beach. It's a 
very important symbol of diversity in Brazil. João Carlos Martins playing the national anthem. Nick Muniz putting the last piece and the heart getting alive. And the Maracanã. This is about beyond vision. We talked about senses. Challenges going through against the wind to, to shape the Agitus, the Olympic irons in the Paralympic universe, the Paralympic movement. And this is beautiful, it's a, it's a project, it's a kind of boots that, uh, that children that can walk, walk with the legs of their fathers and they carry the, the, the Paralympic flag. And for the, she changes their legs in the middle of the, the segment. In the end, we create a, a stair, and this guy stays in front of the stair, and wow, it's a big challenge. It's a challenge that many people around the world in a wheelchair have in, in, our, in, the, in, in their days in general. And in, in that moment, the, the stairs open, and a ramp appear, and they go up and in a design, um, it's a universal design that people stand in the stair in the ramp, not the ramp in, the, in the back of the theater or something like that. It's an it's a, it's a integrated uh, situation. So that it, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Your leaves <laughs> with a heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. The same colors, the same colors. And so, here I have uh, two logos, two small sculptures for the, the, the lady that watched the, the opening ceremony. It's for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. And I have another one here. Someone make birthday today. Did you watch it? Uh, really? Okay, it's for you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much.